Good morning to everyone. I am Dr. J. Aroke John Paul, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Armuhun Pillai Sida Imal College, Tirupattur. On behalf of our department, it's my immense pleasure to welcome the resource person, organizers, supporters, and the participants to the international webinar on forum sensing. A great therapeutic choice for the development of antimicrobial agents. Learning should not stop during lockdown. The objective of this webinar is to keep all of you engaged in the learning process. Brush up your memory with enlightened lectures. Before welcoming the resource person, first, I would like to thank him for accepting our invitation in very short notice and expressed his willingness to disseminate his knowledge at any time on the clock. I also thank Dr. Brinda, Assistant Professor, Department of Animal Health and Management, Alarupa University, for arranging the resource persons for this webinar series. It's our privilege and honor to welcome Dr. Rajamani Gandhan, research scientist, Beijing Computational Science Research Center, Beijing, China, as a resource, source, resource person to this webinar. Everyone in our department has an equal hand behind the organization of this webinar series. I extend a warm welcome to head of the department, Dr. Anandavalli Madam, and my hearty welcome to Dr. G. V. Gopinath, organizing secretary of this webinar. He took maximum effort to complete each host successfully. I welcome the organizing committee members, Mr. Kartigayan and Dr. Sokumar sir, and I am happy to welcome Dr. Brinda Madam. She is on the screen. It is a great pleasure to welcome Professor Ananda Krishnan, head of the department, Information Technology, who always support us technically. I am glad to respectfully and cordially welcome senior professors from many countries, includes India, Ethiopia, Iraq, China, and Korea. Actually, all are the resource persons in their field, and they accept our invitation and glorify us through their participation. Lastly, and importantly, I welcome the research scholars, dedicated students from 20 states of India and across the globe, such as Morocco, Ethiopia, Sri Lanka, and Nigeria. Once again, I welcome one and all. I am very happy to introduce our guest of honor, Dr. Rajamani Gandhan. He has made a powerful contribution to his field of research. He is an eminent scholar, an incredible researcher. He is having 11 years of research experience and published more than 25 research papers in peer-reviewed journals. The total impact factor is more than 25. He has participated in 27 uh, international seminars and presented research papers in both national and international conferences. He was awarded Summer Research Fellowship sponsored by Indian National Science Academy and received several Best Paper Awards. I ensure that this webinar will be thoughtful and the upcoming hours will be enjoyable and fruitful for every one of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, sir. Uh... Yeah, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Hi, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizing secretary, Dr. Gopinath, and the convener of this webinar, Dr. R.K. John Paul, and also the head of the Department of Geology, Dr. Anantavalli, for providing me this opportunity to share my research experience with you all. Uh, Today, I would like to give a small information about the quorum sensing system in bacteria and why this system is very important in drug discovery and development process. Basically, I am from uh, the computational biology background, so I would like to discuss uh, some of the techniques that we, would, uh, we are using in drug discovery process. So let me start with the introduction. Uh, here in the introduction, I have given a graph. Uh, uh, in this graph, you can see that uh, the 
that's a steady increase in the world population here i have given the world population uh, statistics based on this uh, statistic data you can see the world population is ge getting uh, increasing by day by day and now we are uh, around 7.5 billion population in number and uh, this population is uh, is increasing and we are uh, expected to reach around 9.7 billion population in the year of 2050 so as the population is increasing we are in the need of uh, need in the production of more uh, food products for our uh, uh for products to feed the uh, uh, projected extra 2.2 billion people in the upcoming years there are many uh, uh, agriculture fields uh, for the fruit productions uh, listing out is the we do uh, agriculture in the landing and also we uh, do poultry farming and dairy uh, farming all the from all this uh, agriculture we gets the food products for our uh, daily needs among this aquaculture is one of the fastest growing animal production sectors in the world uh, here in uh, this aquaculture uh, uh, aquaculture field uh, day by day we are uh, getting losses in the aquaculture production uh, and these aqua losses in the aquaculture productions are mainly due to the bacterial and and also the viral diseases uh, we generally use normally use this antibiotics to prevent and control the bac uh, bacterial and uh, viral infection in the aquaculture but uh, continuous uh, uses of these antibiotics leads to the development of resistant strains so and uh, also the presence of these antibiotic res uh, residues in the aquaculture products for human consumptions also constitute a major threat to the public health so many researchers are uh, now in the uh, try to uh, try uh, trying to find out a new antibiotics to uh, treat this uh, uh, resistant bacteria uh so the many scientists and the researchers are uh, concentrating on bacterial foreign sensitivity uh to find out the uh, to identify a better antibiotics to treat the bacterial system in the aquaculture uh uh targeting this quorum sensing system has uh, has uh, has been gaining a significant attention in the recent year because of its relevance physiological and pathological events <laughs> as the formation of bioflins and the expression of various various virulence factors now I, i would like to give a short introduction on quorum sensing system normally uh, as we a human uh, use uh, many kind of languages uh, uh, to communicate with each other uh, bacteria being a very tiny particles it communicate with each other uh, via a signaling molecules that signaling mo uh, molecules we call them as an auto indices uh bacteria that source the quorum sensing uh, system requires two things first one is the signaling molecules that we normally call them as an auto indices and second one is a receptor that can uh, specifically detect uh, and recognize these signaling molecules here uh, in the below i have uh, given a, a short uh, diagrammatic representation of the how this quorum sensing system works in the bacteria uh, in the initial process uh, uh i have given a single bacteria uh, at the low concentration this uh, single bacteria produce uh, auto indicer molecules as the bacteria in the next uh, thing as the bacterial population increases there is an increases in the auto indicer molecules on the third slide you can see this auto indicer molecules then goes and bite uh, binds with the bacteria uh, after uh, at the fourth slide after this uh, auto indicer binding with the receptor molecule it uh, modulates the expression of uh, gene expression throughout the population uh, making the non pathogenic bacteria into the pathogenic nature uh next slide here i would like to say about uh, the uh, kinds of quorum sensing signaling molecules used by bacteria uh here first one is a uh, normally we say as a acyl homocerone lactone auto indicer molecule uh normally these kind of auto indicers are used by gram negative bacteria for interspecies communication and second one is the auto indicing peptide normally we called uh, them as a aip and this type of auto indicers are used by gram positive bacteria for interspecies communication and third one is the auto indicer 2 normally that is a ai2 molecule and this type of auto indicers are uh, used by both gram negative and gram positive bacteria for interspecies communication 
uh, moving to the next slide here i have uh, uh, displayed uh, the uh, 2d representation of the auto inducer signaling molecules uh, on the left hand side you can see the 2d representation of acyl homocyan lactan auto inducer molecules hello hello yes sir you carry on sir yeah okay sir uh, left hand side i have marked in the uh, red color boxes here you can see the acyl homocyan lactans are similar in their structure uh, but they have a they share a common uh, lactone ring and the signal specificity of these auto inducer molecules are uh, mediated by the length of this acyl chain normally this acyl chains are uh, normally in a carbon 4 to carbon uh, 14 in nature on, on on my right hand side i have displayed the 2d representation of a2 auto inducer molecule and also the uh, auto inducing peptide uh, in case of auto inducer uh, two molecule we have a boron atom in this structure the signal specificity of this molecule is mediated by the boron atom present in the structure uh, on the down i have represented the 2d representation of auto inducing peptide molecules here it is a short peptide normally it has uh, amino acids of 6 to 10 amino acid in it and also it has some uh, uh, side chain moiety sometimes it has a carbonyl group and also it has uh, some sulfur or uh, methionine some uh, some side chain moiety it will have uh, here I have displayed uh, how this uh, auto inducer molecules are synthesized in bacteria. Just for uh, the representation, it is a cyclic process where uh, here the auto inducer molecules will be generated in two form. One is the RTHMF and also in the STHM uh, boride form. Uh, only in the presence of this uh, auto, uh, bo uh, boron atom in the structure, it has the uh, signaling specificity with the, uh, within the bacteria. Uh, normally, I would like to have my presentation uh, in Vibrio Harvey bacteria. Uh, normally, Vibrio uh, Harvey bacteria is a bioluminescence and gram active bacteria, and it is a free living uh, microorganism in the oceans. Uh, this uh, Vibrio Harvey bacteria communicate uh, within the bacteria using two quorum sensing system one is with the AHL molecule, uh, using AHL molecule, and another one is with the AI2 molecule. Uh, this AHL molecules is uh, used to a language unique for uh, Vibrio Harvey communication. And this AI2 molecule uh, is a universal language used for both uh, used by the gram negative bacteria. Moving to the next slide, there is a question uh, before uh, finding out the inhibitor for this quorum sensing system. Why we need to find a quorum sensing inhibitor? The answer is very simple because nowadays the bacteria are very resistant to the antibiotics available in the market. Uh, in the olden days, when these antibiotics are introduced into the bacteria, this antibiotic has the ability to uh, target and kill the specific bacteria in the environment. After uh, after this resistant uh, came into the existent in nature, when the antibiotics is uh, admitted to the environment, these antibiotics don't has, uh, does not have the ability to target and kill the specific bacteria. One of the best example for the resistant is the penicillin because penicillin was uh, discovered in the, uh, in the year 1942. After uh, Two, uh, two years of uh, it, uh, of its discovery, this uh, penicillin become resistant uh, in nature. Uh, actually, there are uh, moving to the next slide. Here I have given the strategies uh, for quorum sensing inhibition. Normally, they we have three strategies uh, to target this quorum sensing system. First one is targeting the signal uh, generation. And uh, second one is uh, targeting the AHL uh, signal uh, dissemination. And uh, third one is targeting the signal receptor. Actually, uh, normally scientists are uh, targeting the third uh, one, uh, that is the targeting the signaling receptor because it does not uh, uh, have any impact on the normal growth of the bacteria. Uh, rather, it will target only the pathogenic uh, nature of the bacteria. 
so i would like to give you the short introduction what i have done in my phd and uh, what are the anti uh, new antibiotics that we have identified for this vibrio hiveae bacterium actually we have targeted uh, actually i have said that uh, targeting the signal receptor is the has the advantage over uh, targeting the signal uh, generation and also the targeting the ahl signal dissemination so i have targeted that i have taken the two protein for my studies one is the laxar protein and uh, another one is the laxpi protein actually this laxar protein is a signaling receptor for that uh, yeah, uh, acyl homocysteine lactone uh, auto inducer binding and uh, the next one is the laxpi protein it is a signaling receptor uh, for a ai2 binding so i have taken this uh, two receptor for my uh, research studies uh to have a short introduction on uh, laxpi laxar protein normally this uh, vibrio hiveae laxar protein is a unique member of uh, tetar uh, super family of transcriptional regulator normally uh, we have a uh, two regions in the protein that uh, we all know that uh, it has a c terminal domain and also the n terminal domain here the auto inducer binding domain uh, uh, lies in the c terminal domains of the protein and it also has the n terminal domain where the dna binding uh, occurs and these uh, tetar family of transcriptional regulator uh, represents the conserved helix turn helix motifs in the c terminal domain which has the major impact uh, uh, impact in the binding of the auto inducers in the c terminal domain and next coming to the next protein is the laxpi protein uh, this uh, laxpi protein belongs to the large uh, family of periplasmic binding protein and uh, this laxpi protein uh, uh, is uh, is to detect the ai2 auto inducer molecule but in the con conjunction with the inner membrane protein laxp lax q uh, laxq uh, are the membrane brown hy uh, hybrid sensor kinase protein actually this uh, laxp protein has uh, three uh, domain in its uh, uh, different domain in its first one is the periplasmic sensor domain and it also has a cytoplasmic uh, histidine domain and also the response uh, regulatory domain all these domains plays a major role in the direction of this auto inducer uh, uh, in the laxp proteins uh what are uh, next slide i have given what are the um, uh, uh things that are controlled by the quorum sensing system uh, actually this quorum sensing system uh, controls many uh, biological process in the bacteria first one it controls the bioluminescence normally bioluminescence uh, is the uh it is the capability of forming light inside the bacteria actually bacteria has a compound called a luciferase in it uh, inside the bacteria and this uh, lu uh, luciferase when it interact with the oxygen it produce a blue color light uh, light formation so this uh, uh this uh, quorum sensing in, uh, system controls this bio bioluminescent formation in bacteria next one it also controls the various uh, virulen genes expression inside the bacteria and also it plays a major role in the control of the biofilm formation in the bacteria the uh, the biofilm formation uh, is uh, has a major role in the pathogenesis uh, pathogenicity of the ba bacterial species so first what we have done uh, in our study we have collected all the laxar proteins from uh, vibrio uh, different vibrio species uh, to check whether uh, this laxar proteins are unique in every bacterial kingdom or it has any deviation in its structure this study uh, will indicate uh, if uh, if the uh, if the sequence are uh, biological sequence are conserved in nature there will be a conservation in the structural level and it uh, the identified inhibitor will have a role in all the vibrio species so in order to check that we have performed the multiple sequence alignment actually we have did this uh, study in clustral w tool actually clustral w is no, normally available in the online source and uh, this multiple sequence alignment is used to detect the biological uh, uh relevance in the biological sequences 
so next we have uh, constructed the model for the uh, this lexer protein actually normally we have a experimental structure uh, that is uh, determined by uh, x-ray crystallography or nmr but uh, in case of this lexer protein in vibrio harvey we don't have uh, any experimental uh, determined structure in order to have a theoretical structure we have gone for homology modeling actually homology modeling is a uh, a uh, technique which we use in bioinformatics to generate the 3d structure of the protein molecules so using that such uh, technique we have generated the homology model for the lexar protein and we have superimposed all the lexar protein to one over uh, one among uh, over to see whether uh, any conservation was noted in the structure based on this analysis we have noted there was no much deviation among the structure in different vibrio species so this structure has been uh, taken for further drug di uh, discovery process uh here i have in this slide i have uh, displayed uh, the 3d structure of the lexar model and the right hand side i have uh, displayed the ramachandran plot uh in the left uh, by seeing the lexar protein you can notice that this protein are rich in helixes and there is no beta sheets uh, beta sheets and the each helix uh, helix are uh, connected with the loops and uh, i have uh, also marked the helicton helix motifs which plays a major role in the pathogenesis of this uh, uh, pathogenesis role and also in the detection of the auto inducer molecules in it and also i have uh, displayed the region uh, which plays a major role in the helix dimerization motif and also the uh, putative ligand binding site uh, this helix plays a uh, important role in the binding of auto inducer in it uh here in the right hand side i have uh, displayed uh, the ramachandran plot actually ramachandran plot uh, normally we used to validate the uh, used for the validation study to check whether the predicted model uh, model quality is good or, uh, good or bad uh, normally this uh, ramachandran plot has four region that is uh, generous allowed region disallowed region allowed region uh, so uh normally in order to get the good quality of the structure uh, there should not be any number of amino acid residue does uh, that uh, does not lies in the disordered region and uh, uh, 90 more than 80 to 90 percentage of amino acid should allow uh, should uh, occupy the allowed region of the ramachandran plot uh, once this statistic is uh, satisfied then uh, we uh, come to the conclusion that the, our predicted model is quite uh, satisfactory and it can be taken further for our uh, drug discovery process then uh, we have uh, done the molecular docking study of this auto inducer uh, molecules with the lexar protein actually uh, in, uh, this molecular docking is a uh, technique which we normally use in the drug discovery process where we will use this to find out uh, the interaction between the protein and the ligand molecules here first we have uh, the, uh, first we have used this uh, ahl molecule to find out how this ahl molecules interact with the lexar proteins uh, protein uh, based on this docking analysis we found that uh, there are two major amino acid residues that is the uh, asn uh, and also the gln amino acid which plays a major role uh, in the binding uh, with the lexar protein so we come to the conclusion by targeting these two amino acid uh, can uh, give us a clue for the discovery of uh, novel uh, antibiotics against this lexar proteins so in order to confirm our findings we have uh, did a site uh, site directed mutagenesis using in silico model where uh, this asn uh, molecule is uh, mutated with alanine and also we have uh, performed a single and a double mutant analysis and we have uh, did the same docking process based on this uh, muta uh, muta um, mutation analysis we conclude that the two amino acid that is asn and also the glan amino acid plays a major role in the dis uh, drug discovery process uh this is a, this is the finding that we are reporting here that these uh, two amino acids uh, plays a major role in the uh, uh major role in the in the binding of auto inducer and the uh, targeting this two amino acids uh, with, uh, with 
ஒரு this protein uh, whether it uh, our body temperature normally is uh, in 37 degrees celsius so we will uh, place uh, give the temperature around the box around 37 degree and also we will uh, apply some pressure around 1 bar to study how this uh, uh, protein uh, works in the real environment based on this uh, molecular dynamics analysis we come to the conclusion that this uh, uh, auto indicer molecules uh interact uh, with uh, the two amino acids in the protein in a stable manner uh, all this uh, preliminary analysis conclude that targeting that uh, asn and uh, glm amino acid in laxar protein uh, will give a clue for the discovery of new antibiotics uh, you know, against vibrio uh, harvey infections uh this is the uh, hydrogen bond interaction that is mediated between uh, protein and the uh, ligon complexes during the molecular dynamics simulations uh based on this graph we conclude that uh, the interaction that is mediated the, uh, between the ahl molecule and the laxar proteins are stable uh, uh throughout the simulation study uh, which have performed uh, in the molecular dynamics simulation um based on this uh, preliminary data we come to the conclusion that the laxar model has been developed uh, to understand the uh, stable conformation of the protein due to the uh, crystal structure and the model validation result revealed that the model was much more reliable to calculate the structural conformation and conformation changes upon binding of the ligand molecules from the combined results of docking uh, then free energy calculation mutational analysis and md simulation uh, it was found that the active site residues of uh, laxar protein interacted with the uh, uh, ahl molecules using uh, using uh, asm and uh, glycine amino acids then we would like to test whether uh, this uh, uh, already reported uh, antibiotics has uh, same binding nature uh, we are binding nature with the laxar protein b so we have uh, taken two uh, derivatives uh, that is uh, laxar protein and uh, and uh, it has a major role uh, to act as an anti antibacterial agent so we would like to test whether these uh, antibodies has a same binding nature in coincides with the ahl binding so what we have done is here we have taken this uh, two kind of this analogs and we have performed a molecular dyna uh, docking studies and we have also got a good results with this which is in coincides with the ahl uh, previous study because uh, uh, we we found that the two amino acid that is asn137 and glycine137 uh, was interacting with this uh, antibacterial agent and we based on the previous study and also from this study we conclude this these uh, two amino acids by targeting these uh, two amino acids we can uh, find out a uh, new uh, antibiotics uh, by targeting the vibrio harvey in order to control the uh, pathogenesis of vibrio harvey 
uh, here I have just uh, given the 2D representation of uh, the binding mode of this uh, thiazo and chinamaldehyde uh, inside the binding nature of Lexar and Lexp. And these are the some of the docking store uh, scores and uh, and uh, docking scores and the hydrogen bond interaction that was mediated uh, mediated inside the binding. Uh, site of the Lexar protein. In case of this chinamaldehyde derivatives, we have uh, some other supporting evidence that uh, this uh, uh, chinamaldehyde derivative has also have pi pi stacking and uh, uh, pi cation interaction uh, uh, with the Lexar protein. Uh, this uh, pi pi stacking uh, interaction uh, will increase the stability of the. Uh, uh, this actionable uh, derivatives uh, inside the binding site of the Lexar protein. Uh, this is uh, this slide. Uh, I have just uh, given the binding mode analysis of chinamaldehyde derivatives uh, inside the binding site of Lexar protein. And uh, further, uh, we have also validated the docking studies with the molecular dynamic simulations. And based on this RMSD graph, uh, we found that the protein ligand complexes are stable. Uh, over the simulation time of uh, 30 nanoseconds. And uh, further, uh, we have also performed the fluctuation analysis. Whether we, in this fluctuation analysis, we will note uh, how the individual amino acids in the proteins are fluctuated in the environment that we have given to the system. Based on this analysis also, there was no fluctu uh, fluctuation noted in the protein structure. And we... Uh, conclude that uh, that the ligon molecules which had an interaction with uh, ASN and GLSN amino acid uh, has a, a stable conformation in it. Uh, here, uh, these are the uh, hydrogen bonding, uh, hydrogen plant plot that is mediated between Luxor and uh, antibacterial compounds. Based on this uh, analysis, uh, we conclude that the compound, uh, that the compound has a stable binding inside the binding side of the lysol proteins. Uh, to conclude this uh, thing, uh, based on the finding that we conclude the binding pattern of this uh, derivative shows uh, stable hydrogen bond interactions with uh, uh, amino acid ASN and uh, GLN in, uh, inside the binding site of Lex uh, Lexar protein. And the predicted result uh, will be helpful in the discovery and development of novel in, uh, inhibitors to target the pathogenicity of the Vibrio Hyderi bacteria. Uh, here I have uh, just given the pharmacophore hypothesis. Uh, here this pharmacophore hypothesis is uh, nothing but uh, see if we uh, if uh, to say uh, say a short uh, understand to understand for us. Uh, if uh, in a class if we have a list of students in uh, among the students you will uh, normally use their uh, math statement to validate the to predict their knowledge so yes in the same way here uh, in a competi uh, computational method we use the term uh, uh, pharmacophore hypothesis here this pharmacophore hypothesis normally has six variant uh, one is the first one is the aromatic ring normally second one is the hydrogen bond donor then uh, we have the hydrogen bond acceptor, then uh, uh, positively charged group and the negatively charged group. Uh, we will uh, have this all this category uh, to find which molecule is more uh, poten uh, potential among the group of uh, compound that we are having in our hand. So based on this technique, we have used these techniques to find out uh, uh, some of the more potent molecules uh, from the already reported uh, databases. Uh, in this database, we have a n number of compounds uh, which will be isolated from plant kingdom or a maryl kingdom uh, or uh, from synthetic compound. We, uh, we will view the data set and we will uh, uh, analyze using this pharmacophore model to select better compounds uh, for our uh, uh, drug discovery process. Based on this, uh, by using these techniques, we have uh, identified a list of eight uh, compound which has uh, more potency against this Vibrio Harvey bacteria. 
and uh, then we have uh, synthesized the compound in our laboratory and we have taken the compound for a uh, feather in uh, in vitro validation here i have uh, 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 given a chart this is a bioluminescence inhibition uh, chart uh, and uh, here in the bottom i have uh, uh, denoted the concentration of the compound which we have used in the study and uh, in the y axis it is the bioluminescent in uh, intensity when uh, when uh, when we are increasing the concentration of the compound there is a reduction in the bio bioluminescent uh, intensity indicates that uh, the identified compound has a uh, potency in uh, targeting the pathogenicity of the bacteria uh, here uh, in this slide i have uh, displayed the biofilm formation uh, slide uh, in the yeah, i have differentiated in uh, two thing one is a a and another, another one is a b uh, a is the control uh, plate here uh, you can see a dense number of biofilm formation and uh, second uh, thing is the compound treated biofilm formation uh, here you can see the reduction in the biofilm uh, compared to the control graph and also we have tested the identified compound uh, using uh, with uh, uh, motility assay and the above a and b denotes the uh, swimming behavior of the compounds uh, in vibrio harvei and uh, c and d uh, indicates the swimming behavior of vibrio harvei uh, uh, bacteria based upon uh, this uh, results we come to know that uh, the identified compound has the reduction in, uh, in the swimming and swimming behavior of uh, vibrio harvei based on the computational study and also the in vitro analysis uh, uh, we come to the conclusion that the identified uh, antibiotics has a, a role in targeting the pathogenicity of the bacteria and we have also tested the bioluminescent intensity of this uh, compound uh, in vibrio harvei at various concentration uh, based on this analysis we come to the conclude that uh, uh, it has a dose dependent inhibition uh, uh, in the bioluminescent in intensity compared to the control graph based on the summary uh, based on this computational uh, prediction uh, we have we suggested a, a new antibiotics that is a uh, we named uh, them as a cambridge uh, id 7364106 uh, which could uh, serve as an anti quorum sensing molecule for the vibrio uh, harvei bacteria uh, actually uh, all this our finding has been uh, published in uh, different international journals uh, first uh, finding has been published in the journal of molecular structure and uh, the second uh, and the some of the results has been published in the journal of uh, molecular structure and dynamics and uh, some of the results has also been published in the journal of uh, molecular pathogenesis uh, uh, with a greater impact uh, then uh, coming to the next thing uh, we have uh, we have also uh, we, uh, we have now we will come to the next uh, category that is the uh, um, that is the laxpi protein uh, here i have uh, represented the uh, 3D representation of the LAXP protein uh, in the bound nature of uh, AI2 uh, inhibitor in it. Uh, here also, I have just uh, give the uh, I have uh, sent the uh, uh, displayed the uh, th uh, confirmation of uh, this autoinducer molecule inside the binding site of the LAXP proteins. and uh, here uh, here in the study uh, here, here also we have taken two kind of uh, inhibitors that is uh, diazoboracan derivatives and boronic acid derivatives to study how this uh, uh, molecule has a major binding nature with the laxb protein so uh, here also we have uh, done the docking uh, studies uh, with the laxis uh, laxb protein here i have reported the docking score and also the how this uh, derivative 
derivatives uh, play, uh, interact with the uh, molecules uh, molecules i have also listed out uh, the important amino acid that uh, plays a major role uh, in the binding inside the lexp proteins uh, here i have just uh, uh, reported the uh, uh, a diagrammatic representation of this binding of uh, uh, boronic acid in uh, inside the binding site of lexp protein and also here also the molecular docking uh, results uh, of diisoboracan derivatives based on this uh, study uh, we conclude that a list of amino acids that is a serine phenylalanine uh, and uh, asparagine has a major role in the binding of this inhibitor inside the binding site of the lexp protein and the identified uh, binding uh, nature will be helpful in the discovery and the development of novel inhibitors targeting the lexp protein in vibrio harvey bacteria uh, here also we have used the pharmacophor hypothesis and based on this pharmacophor uh, hypothesis uh, we have screened the molecules uh, with the cambridge database and uh, based on this analysis we have found that uh, uh, five kinds of uh, drug we have identified five drug molecules which has the potency uh, with this like uh, lexp proteins and also we have uh, uh, these are the uh, 3d representation of the drug molecules inside the binding site of the lexp protein and uh, we have also performed the dft studies normally dft studies used to find the homo and lumo nature of the molecules normally homo is the highest uh, molecular orbital and the lowest uh, molecular orbital uh, uh, lumo is normally the lowest uh, molecular orbitals this uh, dft studies normally used to uh, study the stability of the drug molecules inside the binding site of the protein if the energy gap between this homo and lumo is minimal in the, uh, which indica which will uh, determine the stability of the drug molecules and uh, we have also validated our studies with uh, statistical validation uh, using the decoset validation and we have performed the goodness of heat actually this uh, goodness of heat uh, normally used to validate uh, our uh, computational uh, drug di uh, discovery process uh, if the goodness of the heat value is higher uh, around 0.6 to 0.9 indicates uh, uh, identified molecule has the good uh, uh, results in the experimental part so based on this analysis uh, we can uh, we have taken one molecule that is a cambridge 5144368 uh, for our uh, in vitro validation uh, here this molecule and we have uh, checked the bioluminescent intensity uh bioluminescent intensity based on this results we conclude that uh, the compound showed a dose de uh, dependent inhibition uh, in, uh, in the vibrio harvey pathogenesis and also we have che uh, checked for the uh, uh, biofilm formation inhibition here uh, the same one that is a uh, a is the control plate and b is the treatment plate uh, in the a slide you can see the dense number of biofilm was noted whereas in the b treatment plate we can see the reduction in the biofilm was observed uh, we have also performed the mortality graph uh, assay uh, a and b shows the swimming behavior of the vibrio harvey and uh, c and d shows the swimming behavior of vibrio harvey based on this results we can conclude that uh, the identified compound has the potential in uh, controlling the swimming and swimming behavior of the vibrio harvey and we have also tested uh, the bioluminescent intensity of the bacteria at various concentration based on this results uh, 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 you can conclude that uh, the compound has a dose uh, dependent inhibitions uh, in the bioluminescence uh, and it also showed the uh, uh, dose uh, dependent inhibitions in the biofilm uh, for biofilm formation based on this summary uh, we conclude that uh, the in uh, computational part and also the in vitro, uh, it, uh, in vitro validation proved that the compound uh, cambridge 5144368 has a potency with the anti quorum sensing uh, compounds and uh, the uh, our uh, part of the work was uh, published in uh, uh, 
uh, applied uh, biochemistry and biotechnology journal and uh, some of the work was also published in journal of receptor and signal uh, transcriptions uh based on this uh, study we have uh, founded uh, two uh, antibiotics which has a potency in targeting the current sensing system of vibrio harvey and uh, we are uh, validating our in vitro uh, results with the uh, in vivo model uh, we are now currently we are doing the uh, animal model uh, using uh, this uh, two compounds and uh, uh, initially we are uh, using the zebra bis model to check the toxicity and also the potential of this compounds and uh, in the initial find uh, uh, in vivo model has uh, good results further we are uh, planning to have a short uh, uh, testing of these compounds with a small farming industries thanking you thank you very much Hello. yeah, yeah thank, you, sir. thank you very much Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you for your nice presentation. And, um, okay, sir. We have some questions raised by the participants. Okay, sir. Just uh, to clarify them. Uh, okay. One, uh, Akansha Arun, she asked, how does quorum sensing induces antimicrobial resistance to neighboring bacteria? Is there any mechanism? actually this quorum uh, sensing uh, systems uh, normally it uh, all of the bacteria so all the virulence factors biofilm formations and uh, all this uh, major physiological processes uh, controlled by this quorum sensing bacteria and another doctor shikili balaji she asked how much quantity of vibrio will be required to exhibit the luminescence? Hello, I'm not getting you, sir. Ah. Uh, Dr. Shili Balaji asked how much quantity of vibrio will be required to exhibit the luminescence? It is uh, around 0 0.5 ml is sufficient. Okay. Then Dr. Brinda asked how does uh, quorum sensing uh, related to biofilms? Uh, actually, uh, uh, biofilm is a matrix formation. Uh, these antibiotics, when we are at, uh, giving the antibiotics, uh, the bacteria has its own production uh, by forming these biofilm formations. So, if a compound has a potency in targeting the biofilm formation, that uh, then the compound has a more potency in targeting, uh, has the potency in uh, reducing the pathogenesis of the bacteria also. Thank you, sir. Then another question, how current sensing a type of cell-to-cell -cell communication is mediated? Actually, uh, as I said that this uh, type of mediation uh, is uh, based on the signaling molecules, sir. Uh, we have three, I have said in the slides that uh, we have uh, three kind of signaling molecules are used by this bacteria to communicate with each other. With each other. That is CHL, A2 and uh, Auto-inducing peptides. Participants can raise questions in the chat box. We are going to conclude the session with a word of thanks. So, if there is any questions, participants can raise in the chat box. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Mani Andan. Thank um, you, sir. We are, we are uh, really very much thankful for your um, rich knowledge in accommodation biology and uh, discovery um, actually uh, it is a new area to most of the um, general zoology professors um, people who are working in bioinformatics and biotechnology and microbiology they may be well versed in this uh, topic uh, anyway you are uh, sharing with the excellent powerpoint on uh, quorum sensing signaling among bacteria uh, its uh, mechanism at the types and uh, multilingual bacteria the protein uh, targets uh, used uh, uh, lexor and lexor and lexor p protein targets used and current sensing controlling mechanism then molecular uh, docking methods so, so you have um, excellently explained all those uh, things and you have also shared your knowledge on novel antibiotic discovery uh, using molecular dogging
and pharmacophore hypothesis with uh, different uh, molecules, its mechanism. And your presentation on bioluminescence inhibition of um, uh, Harvey uh, and its effect by chemical bridging, the biofilm formation and its uh, inhibition, uh, talking score of um, um, various derivatives, uh, then um, validation mechanism. So, a lot of things. In fact, uh, within a short time, we have pumped um, um, excellent information and ample of information, uh, which is really uh, useful for the uh, researchers in this uh, uh, field. Um, actually, uh, from the bottom of the heart, uh, our intuition, uh, we submit our sincere thanks to you. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. So, I would like to also thank our college secretary and the principal for their ceaseless um, encouragement and uh, our head of the department, uh, Dr. Anandavalli, and uh, Dr. Brinda from Alhapa University, uh, who took painful effort to fix the resource person. And uh, I have to thank uh, Professor Anandakishnan, the head of the Department of Information Technology of our college. So without his uh, help, we cannot execute the program uh, without any technical bugs. I have to thank my colleagues, uh, Dr. R. K. Janpal, um, uh, Dr. Sipakumar, Professor Kathike, and uh, then my thanks are also due to the participants within India and from overseas uh, countries, research scholar, teachers, and students, and the aspirants of, uh, of science from the community. So, um, this video, then we will make it public uh, within two days. So once again, I thank everyone who participated in the webinar and for the resource person. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Participants are requested to fill their feedback form. Um, the feedback form link will be uh, active up to 2 p.m. So within 2 p.m. you have to submit the feedback form. And while you fill the feedback form, please take care uh, uh, while you type your email ID. So, if your email ID is uh, uh, with error, we will not be able to send the certificate. So please take care uh, while filling the email ID. So thank you, thank, thanks to everyone again. Thank you very much.